Not quite. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Hi there. I'm just reading some uh, Transformers comics. We might talk about them a little bit later on. Welcome, uh, folks. This is Australian Transformers Weekly. We are bringing you Transformers news from around the world with a uniquely Australian bent. Actually, it's not really that unique, but sure. This is episode 185. We are recording live Friday, the 15th of March, 2019. And uh, it's been a few weeks away. I've been around the world. I've been on the other side of the planet, but I'm back. And uh, I'm, I've, uh, I've got a couple of cohorts with me tonight. We're going to be talking about some new Siege figures that are uh, on the way. Uh, we've got some new comics to talk about. Well, we've got a new comic. We'll have another one in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've got some new box art to look at for more Siege figures and uh, the, the big boys that we're seeing, Omega Supreme and Jetfire. And we've got all of that and more coming up after this. I'm glad you could concentrate when Ash is doing that. <laughs> I just, I, I didn't look. <laughs> I accidentally discovered like a secret boner mode for Red Heat, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a second, hang on. Let me see if I can work this out. Secret yeah, boner mode. Secret. Is this sung to the sung to the tune of Secret Agent Man? Secret oh. boner <laughs> mode. He's given you a boner and taken away your name. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, we've uh, we've um, yeah, we've gone. It's gone well early here, hasn't it? Wow. <laughs> It's all gone downhill before we even started, no less. Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> welcome to the show. I don't know. I don't know how much of the. Uh, I don't know how much of the. Uh, the mid opening credits banter is going to make it into the show. But we'll see. We'll see how we go. Uh, um, I'm Jason. Joining me this week, uh, we have Ash coming to us from Launceston in Tasmania. How are you doing, sir? Not on fire and becoming colder every day. Just oh. like Tazzy's supposed to be. <laughs> you must be about to be underwater then. Uh, we give it time. We haven't started raining yet, but I'm sure it's going to happen literally any minute now. Uh, I think uh, looking out my window up here, I think you're correct. Coming to us from his undisclosed location somewhere in country Victoria, we have Brad. Brad, it's it's been a few weeks since I've chatted with you on the podcast. How's it going? Good, good. And I do have a couple of questions phone related to ask you off, <laughs> off, off podcast. Uh, uh, so I, I, sadly, I, not I, about I, new phones. I will just point out that um, I have been away for a few weeks because I did go to Spain. I did go to Mobile World Congress and I saw a bunch of new phones and I got to touch Huawei's foldable Mate X phone and it was cool. Ooh. Yeah. But it's also going to cost you about four or $5,000 and it's probably not that much. <laughs> so, oh, holy crap. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I'm not sure whether that was actually just you sneezing or if that was actually a reaction to the price no, that of was phone. The idea of four or five thousand dollars spent on a phone that I you mostly use to read mm. news articles on the toilet just scared the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I believe it scared something out of you that you might be doing on the toilet. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough too. Yeah, the, the iconic Motorola Razor was one of the first to, <laughs> to sort of go into that foldable phone. Now everyone else is going for it too. And yeah, Falcons. <laughs> the same technology unearthed as it, it were. It is literally the same. Actually, they are bringing... Just, oh, this is... This Let's is, do it. Let's, weird. Let's just they, are, they are actually bringing back the Razor name for yeah. a foldable phone. Yeah, excellent. Um, so, you know, it's 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 going to be a it's going to be a thing. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, so um, look, very very quickly since it's been a few weeks since I've been on, um, I will just point out that last year when I went to Barcelona, I managed to find, I mean, yeah, I actually managed to do quite well with um, transformers hunting in Barcelona last year. I came away mm -hmm. with primitive skateboarding prime and oh, the transformers tribute that. two pack. This year. I came away with absolutely fuck all because the same <laughs> shop that I went to last year still had that Transformers <laughs> Tribute 2-pack on the shelf. <laughs> and when I went to when I went to another branch of that store, I found Transformers Prime Beast Hunters RC. Still oh, wow. wow. See, there's a toy world in Tasmania that has Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Ratchet just sitting on the shelf yeah, alongside newer studio oh. series. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, Transformers hunting was not necessarily successful this year in Barcelona. I was, I was, I must admit, quite, quite disappointed. Um, I actually, 
I actually took two suitcases that I had packed lightly on the premise that <gasps> oh. I, might, <laughs> I might throw everything into one suitcase in order to fit some Transformers from the bountiful plains of Barcelona. And um, Did you end up putting wow. one suitcase into another suitcase because it was just that sad? I almost, I, I, I could have done it. I could have done oh. it. I, 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 ended up with, I ended up with two suitcases that were about like 12 or 13 kilos each coming back and... And then as you were going through the security checkout to leave, they're just like, oh, packing light, sir. And you're like, no, just a bad, bad day. (laughs) It was a bad bad day as I was uh, out shopping for Transformers. (laughs) Um, Speaking of of having bad days out shopping for Transformers, um, holy shit, has anyone actually cited any Transformers siege figures in New South Wales? (laughs) Not really. None in Victoria. All... No, 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 no. You've got them all over Victoria. They're just not well, in underwater. Tasmania's yeah. still drowning in them. Yeah. Oh, really? I thought you said Tasmania wasn't underwater. No, no we're drowning in siege figures. <laughs> the water comes <laughs> later. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, no, that's, I get those two confused all the time. Yeah, there's parts of <laughs> America underwater right now, not us. That's true. Look, um, we uh, well, look. I've added a section into the news to talk about availability, so I might save some of my conspiracy theories and stuff until then. Um, you don't have your tinfoil hat yet, so you just not yet. I haven't. You know what? Uh, so I'm actually I'm not in the study this week. I'm up in my living room. Um, I just feel like there's, it's going to be a little bit nicer up here, but a little bit more space. And my house is being sold, and so my study is basically a wasteland, and I think it's going to echo crazily. But <laughs> I can see, I can see over there in my kitchen, I can see the alfoil. So, like, if I need to get a tinfoil hat, I can do one. <laughs> I can as do soon it. as you feel the government at the edge of your brain, that's when you get it. Mm, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I, need to, uh, I need to message Bill for some proper placement of said tinfoil yeah. hat. Possibly, yes. Possibly, yes. I suspect that anyone listening to the podcast now will not know who Bill is. So, anyway. <laughs> um, yes. So, let's uh, let's start off with some bot shots, shall we? Um, we uh, so when, this is this is actually really good. I'm very happy about this because when I went away, and like it's been about a month since I've been on the show, when I went away, there was no bot shots. I've come back, there is bot shots. There's funny things for me to look at and um, – Come along and uh, apply apply like uh, apply my like emojis to in the group. So, Brad, do you want to do you want to bring up the um do you want to bring up the winners of uh, the last couple of weeks? We did no show last week, so we've got two weeks worth of bot shot winners to catch up on. Now, uh, congratulations must go to Kyle Kirkwood for uh, for this week's winner. Now, is that a bot bot or is that just a crazy accessory? <laughs> I was hoping someone else could tell me that it doesn't have panel lines, so I'm guessing it's a crazy accessory. I think it's, I think it's a bot shot. A bot, a bot bot or a bot shot? It's a bot bot in a bot shot. A bot bot in a bot shot? I'm fairly <laughs> positive. Fair enough. I've seen that bot bot, and it is, I, I want to say it's like Funcast oh. or something ridiculous. It's like what? I think it's he is like an, he's like a mushroom, and I think his name is Fungus. All oh, right, that's oh. not what that's not what I thought you said. But yes, fair enough. Um, so Carl Kirkwood is the winner with uh, this shot of Megatron, uh, saying that with this tool we shall defeat the Autobots once and for all. Um, <laughs> and um, nice job on the uh, glowing eyes there. Now we also have uh, the winner for winner from the week before from uh, Steve Kukulis, um getting all of the uh, all of the all of the Autobot cars lined up in a dance mood. <laughs> That's fantastic. That, that, that was that was extremely good. Um, I was I was extremely happy to see that one while I was uh, while I was away. Um, yeah, no, very happy, very well done, everyone. And um, we are looking forward. To, we are looking forward to more hilarious photographs. Uh, yes. Um, so just on on that, uh, a little bit, little bit of an admin note for box shots. Uh, of course, we, if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, a uh, long time listener, first time called La, uh, we encourage you to take your bots out of their cabinets and um, put them out into the great big wide world outside and take some photos, preferably of them doing some funny things. But sometimes you can just have them there posing and uh, looking a little bit serious as well. Weekly winners go into monthly prize draw and the monthly winners go into the hat free yearly prize. Full terms and conditions on the website as Brad was just scrolling through at transformerscca.com. 
Now let's talk about some let's talk about some uh, some Transformers sightings, shall we? Like I'm very excited to I'm very excited that we've actually spotted a relatively recent Transformer in Sydney. Um, Siege Transformers have been making their way around the country at Toy World stores, and um, Sydney doesn't have Toy World stores, so we've been watching we've been watching the rest really? of the country at all. Yes, yeah, oh. Sydney's got no Toy Worlds. There's one up in like Newcastle. Um, so this is why this is why whenever you, uh, someone someone said on the um, someone said on the Facebook group uh, earlier this week or last week they were just like um, uh, I was like where where are you finding all of your siege figures and I just said in everyone else's posts because <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep, it's exactly. just uh, yeah no it's just there's there's not too many around now um, so we have found in the last few weeks for some reason we've gone to the um, refractor prototype there on your screen Brad. Correct me, where do you need to go? Um, well, we're, we're talking about sightings, so just us. Oh, um, okay. And it goes back to reference. <laughs> That's all right. I'll stop, I'll stop sharing. Uh, go. Okay, cool. Um, so we have spotted a Voyager Siege Starscream in Sydney. Now, there's been a, a bit of a new stockist for Transformers in, in the form of a shop known as Kid Stuff. Now, Kid Stuff is usually known as uh, sort of some younger kids, educational sort of toys. Um, they have been stocking Transformers Siege. And, uh, yeah, so they, they've got Wave 2 Voyagers. At least they've got one. Um, and I believe... Declan purchased it today, so we should expect to see more of that in the group soon. We are seeing battle battle masters and micro masters, at least oh, like yeah. two or three of them, go around the country in big W stores. That is actually the first major retail presence for Transformers Siege, and it is uh, March. Yeah, <laughs> we're only what three months late compared yeah, to everyone else. Yeah, it's only only a little bit late, um, and uh, I didn't actually I didn't actually bring this up in time. Uh, but if, I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can find this very quickly on my phone because I did get a bit of an ominous email from Hasbro uh, when I got. I got. I got a little a bit, bit of ominous annoyed. email from Hasbro. Yeah, I got a little bit annoyed um, when I was uh, about to head off to Barcelona, and I sent an email to Hasbro going, "Look, <laughs> I'm in New South Wales. When am I going to buy? Be able to buy siege figures?" Um, and Hasbro wrote back and. Where's <laughs> oh you want to buy our toys? Well <laughs> become a sponsor or something. <laughs> Pay a lot of money. You oh, like yeah. Transformers. Yes. You fool. We have made these uh, Transformers fewer as a collector. Now play collector prices. Uh, Transformers Hasbro.com. Here we, here we here we go. Here we go. So I, uh, I emailed Hasbro and I said, hi there, can you advise when we'll be able to buy the new Transformers Siege figures at major retailers? They've only been stocked at Hobbyco and King's Comics so far, name drops for both stores there, and both shops charge above RRP for the figures. I got this lovely response from uh, from Tanya. Uh, she said, uh, the Transformers War for Cybertron is only just releasing now. Accurate. Uh, the Toy Worlds... The Toy Worlds, they like the interwebs. The Toy <laughs> Worlds have had stock and Toy Universe, not someone I'm familiar with, will, will should have stock shortly. We hope Target will have stock next month and then Big W and Kmart in April, followed by the ominous part, we are yet to receive orders from these customers. So what? this is all this is all mid-year sales. <laughs> the, the skull. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. God. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. That was a good Fantastic. pause because that, that, that was warranted. <laughs> I thought so. I thought so. <laughs> look, um, as to like, so Big W has got some siege figures in March, so that's a little bit wrong. Mm. And who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe Kmart may not have actually placed an order for some Transformers. They might have forgotten. You know that that. Um, that order form just sort of slipped down the back of the filing cabinet when you placed it on top of it. You know, it happens all the time. Um, they just order the same range of studio series over and over again because they keep restocking the last wave at my local game art. Well, can, can we can we take some time out to can we take yeah. some time out to point out? So I went to I this will come up in acquisitions later. I went to Toy Mate in Chatswood yesterday. Uh, they did have some siege figures, same same battle masters and micro masters mm -hmm. have been making their way around. But they also had bot bots. They had season season. It's series two. 
bot bot figures and some series ones. So oh, really, I've picked up some series two bot bots. We'll talk about them in uh, in uh, new acquisitions. But I think this might actually be a grand master plan from Hasbro, right? Because We've said for the last few years that the first wave of any Transformers line always ends up shell forming. So I think Hasbro's finally figured out how to stop that happening by bypassing the first wave entirely. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> no, it does. Not no. logical. It, it stops the first wave of, from shell forming because the <laughs> it's a chill. shell form. No one yeah, stops meme of a black man having his head right now. Yeah, you can't no shell for war if you're not warming the shelf, mm-hmm. if you're never yeah. off the shelf to begin with. Totally. They who purchase no figures has no shelf to warm. <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, look, there's one. There's one other thing I want to point out here as well, which is the theory that I've been going on for a while, and I sort of had this confirmed when I went to the UK after my trip to Barcelona, and I asked, I asked one of my friends in London, like, where should I go to buy Transformers, thinking that I might get like a nearby <laughs> toy store, and his answer, his answer was Forbidden Planet. Now, Forbidden Planet is basically like Melbourne's Minotaur, Sydney's King's Comics. It's very, like, it's specialist. It's a pop, pop culture store. They do have Transformers. And I did buy Ravage and Laserbeak because I felt like I did want to at least have a Transformer to show for it. <laughs> I'm um, not leaving here empty-handed, Dan. No, yeah, basically, I didn't, I wouldn't, I didn't want to leave there empty-handed. Um, they were cheaper than Hobby Co. and King's Comics. They're... Um, their, their figures were twenty dollars fifty cents for the uh, for the battle masters, uh, whereas those guys those guys on sale I saw them today in kid stuff were twenty two dollars. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. It's all mm. it's all a bit crazy. It's a bit um, like that sometimes. Yeah. So so here's, just, my, here's my theory, right? Uh, Australia and the UK have both lost Toys R Us in the last year. Mm-hmm. And I think this is what happens to toy availability when you lose a major retailer like that. The UK does have a couple of uh, a couple of other chains that have sort of stepped up to fill that void. Australia really doesn't. Like yeah. Hasbro is really sort of relying on Toy World and Toy Make to get these figures out to people now that Toys R Us is gone. The major retailers are probably not that interested because everyone went to shop at Toys R Us for ages. And um, yeah, I, I, I think I think. We're in this point where we need to figure out what toy retailing in Australia looks like in the post Toys R Us era. Well, is, <clears throat> is this going to lead into distribution discussion, or is that later? Well, and it is. This is the distribution. Okay. Discussion. Well, things can't be found. How many? How many? You go into your local. Well, okay, here local toy shop. Go in. The shelves are still loaded with Bumblebee two step changes and all that sort of stuff. There's no studio. Or, Berserker. No, no, they've, yeah, they've, they've all got crowbar. All got yeah, crowbar. yeah. All, all oh crowbar. my god, yes, yeah. crowbar. I yeah. could drown so, in a sea of crowbar. There's, there's Do ample you know what drowning in Tasmania tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's ample bumblebee stuff. Maybe they've gone right. Bumblebee's not selling. We're not going to invest in studio series. You're saying because Toys R Us are out, no one else is going to buy. But you've got Kmart, Target, Big W, and all these other smaller stuff that still seems to be buying or contacting Hasbro to say we want figures, but it's more so the figures collectors want aren't getting distributed because all the shit that we don't want is stocking shelves. It's just there. That's the thing. I actually was at my local Toy World and they had this massive collection. Like you said, Crowbar, massive. Now I asked one of the people who worked there, I said, look, there is a new range coming. Are you getting it? And her immediate response was, we don't usually get new product until we've cleared off the previous shelf. And I like turn around, I'm like, it's full of crap, though. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, her manager was like, new wave? Yeah, one of each, please. And so it, it still happened, but it was still a case of like, uh, you're expecting to sell that? Do you know what that is? No, It's they the don't. same figure 19 times. <laughs> Even the one fan of Crowbar who probably lives in the fucking darkest part of Africa has already got a figure. They're not coming to Tasmania to buy 19 more. No. Mm. Not at all. Uh, Pro Bar Army. That is the one figure that has been on every single shelf in <laughs> Except now, uh, what's what's his repaint? Uh, Berserker or something? Uh, no. The well, Berserker was the last night. Yeah. Crowbar and someone else, Strong it Arm. Doesn't matter, but the repaint is the one that's now shell forming here as well. Yeah. 
Who went to his? It was Crowbar, Crankcase, and that's the one. Crank, yep. Crankcase. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's talk about some. Uh, let's talk about some news, shall we? Um, What's actually coming? Eventually. Yeah. Eventually, nothing here. But let's let's talk yeah. about stuff that's going to come out in uh, Japan, shall we? So we do have some. Uh, we do have some uh, new images of. Uh, oh, me apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take a second. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am making Brad run the screen share tonight because my apartment is in uh, pieces and I couldn't actually find the keyboard to run the screen sharing computer. Yeah. I, tr uh, I tried to prelude it ooh. before and I got ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. So, uh, so we are looking at the uh, prototype version, is that, of um, uh, Siege Refractor? I, I say I'm not sure because it's not actually on my screen. I think it's, the, yeah, I mean, make big. I think what oh, we're looking at is this is the final shot, but this is the uncolored prototype. I think you need to uh, you know actually need to actually oh, yeah. pause the presenter. Yeah, oh. present, present yeah. everyone. And yeah. press the hide button on that thing at the bottom. Yeah, sorry. There we go. And then change that before we all get dizzy. <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> is it? <laughs> yes. There we okay. go. Right here we go. This is the uh, this is the figure that Hasbro and Takara wanted to buy three of. And it doesn't come in like a box with just three of them. No, no, no. You have to actually buy three of them. Buy this guy three times. This is so nice. You must buy it thrice. I think I think it's actually interesting that the one thing that's in color in this is the the weapon. Caliburst. Caliburst, the weapon master with his purple goo gun. So Caliburst is the. Does Caliburst come with Refractor? Is he separate? He's separate, but he's in the same wave. They've been doing that a lot. Sort of, if this if this target master comes out with these figures, these figures are shown holding that target master. Yeah, uh, it works. We've seen some painted prototypes of this guy um, mm. earlier in the year when we saw the uh, the the diorama set up at one of the um, set up at one of the toy fair. Yeah. and like it does look pretty good. Oh, look, look, Calibus really is the only thing that's in color. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, look, I, I didn't have a problem with how the figure looked. Back then, I don't have a problem with how the figure looks now. I reckon it'll be pretty good. What about that? <laughs> Not mm. that it matters at all. I don't Mr. even know Hollow why. Butt. Why are they photogra photographing it like that? <laughs> They're just not hiding it. They're just going, you know what? We know there's nothing there. The big question I have is obviously refractor slash reflector slash erector. He's obviously designed to be, re you know, reflector. Three guys, one camera. Mm -hmm. But if you buy one, what does he do? Uh, doesn't he transform into like a, a, a weapon station or something as well? Is there a... like a, You mean like a base mode? Mm. No base he mode turns base into mode. something. No, I mean like, you know, how like the base modes for like Times Return of Us. And then you just explode him and lay him out all over the place. And now he's a base. I'm like, no, no, he's a mess. <laughs> so he turns uh, into something. I'm pretty sure he does turn into something. Maybe it's just like a Cybertronian tank or something like um i'm pretty sure that that is i'm pretty sure we've seen that but uh i can't really remember and um yeah googling no. madly captain yeah <laughs> commence googling uh yeah he turns but, into a spaceship i do know that the, the 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 circular part on the chest is detachable so that you can uh, you can attach it to one of your three so that that oh, one can no. be the, um, the view master no no that's fine um because that, that way you've, you've sort of you've replicated their uh, their G one aesthetic, where, where one of them is the main uh, the main figure. I uh, located an image captain. He turns yes. into a weird long gun. Okay, <laughs> let's 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 change to that. Uh, where? Yeah, there you go. It's on Ash's screen. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's you everywhere. Can't find Ash's screen. There, there, there it is. <laughs> so as you can see, that shows the combined mode of all three of them. Mm -hmm. and oh. A single one turns into a long, weird gun thing. Yes, fair enough. I mean, look, the, the, so when they did him as a repaint of Shockwave for BotCon, he also turned into a long, weird gun thing. So oh, it's kind of shot turned into a yeah. long, weird gun thing. Mm -hmm. But um, the interesting thing from seeing this is that his gun with the radar dish on it, three of them turn into a tripod. I think that's fantastic. I know, it's great, isn't it? That's actually really clever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, and we're done. And we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, well, do, you, do we know what wave refractor is in? I don't know. There's the, the, honestly with seeds, there's so many things coming out so quickly. I've actually lost track of what waves which. All I know is there's the things that I want and the things that aren't available to me yet, and they overlap. They seem to be the same list. Fair enough. 
Mm. Uh, so next up, we are looking at the uh, Takara Tomi recently released photographs of Studio Series Shatter. Uh, she's the red one, right? Yes, she is. Well, you, you already led with the she's the she, so. Yes, yeah, I, I, I can't quite remember, but yes. Um, so yes, the red the red muscle car from Bumblebee. And so we've we've had... We've already had one version of her in Studio Series, haven't we? No. Just not You're thinking of Dropkick. No. Right. There has not been a Studio Series release of Shatter. There has been several one-step changes and all yeah. kinds of things that I colloquially call garbage. Uh, Dropkick <laughs> has come out, and now she's come out. The thing I love about these images is that they are so unashamedly straightforward. There's no mm. Photoshopping. You can see every little problem with it. <laughs> and it means you can weigh out whether you think it's good or not. Like you can see, that's, that's actually pretty common with Takara Tomi, right? Because Hasbro will often go for the renders. They'll go for a render. They'll go for the absolutely perfect painted figure for the packaging or whatever. This, this is, this looks like it's come off the assembly line. But uh, which... I, I think that's a very Japanese um, thing. That's Takara mm. does this a lot. They're like, here is the toy. Yep. Absolutely. This is what you're paying your money for. This is what you're getting. Now, an issue that a lot of people had with Shatter is that her legs do look very long. It's true. It's just part of the mold. For me, it's all about that car mode. I think it actually looks very, very good. And it looks like it transforms in a unique way, which that, cars... that, that car mode holds together really well. Yeah, it looks really, really solid. So I'm quite keen on this one. Yeah, drop I actually. It. I actually have a secret project for this one. <laughs> yes, yeah. because she's got that stupid battle mask head that never appeared in the film. She's got that weird bug head. I've actually bought one of the other toys, one of the terrible two-step changes that for some reason has an incredibly good sculpted normal face head for her. <laughs> so I'll be performing surgery. <laughs> Have a so smart you're, 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 you're literally going to give your Transformers a head swap operation. I absolutely am going to operate because I've got Studio Series Bumblebee. He just needs a little bit of paint and he's a lot better. So why not just lop someone's head off while I'm at it? <laughs> Indeed. Let's move on. We've got uh, we've also got shots of scrap metal. Scrap metal? Well, we've oh, got wait, Optimus. Wait, wait, there's, there's an Optimus. Now, Optimus is all wait, over the place. The targets first. in America. He's hitting the shelves. He hasn't reached us yet. And... I want this guy so badly. I've actually done something I promised I would never do, and I've done it. <laughs> At my local toy world, I've printed out a photo of him, and I gave it to the ladies at the counter and says, when this appears, don't put it on the <laughs> shelf. Just give it to me. <laughs> I'm yeah, you you know now. that's not going to work, right? <laughs> I you hope it does. It no, the reason I never yeah. did it is because it feels so pathetic, and I knew it would never work, but I think... I think you're going to get a new low. And the shelf will be full of them. And you'll just be like, what? Why? Yep. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, let's be clear. No, no, sorry. There'll be there'll still be 19 crowbars. Yeah. <laughs> We're not getting him off Studio Series. We haven't sold all the old ones yet. Like one more Optimus Prime. And you'll be like, why didn't you call me? And they'll just be like, who are oh, you? That's, oh, you're the one who left that piece of paper. Yeah. yeah. Without your phone number on it. Well, that, yeah, that's not just like seeing a manager and putting your phone number on the back of a stand It's like you never get the phone call. Yeah, yeah. Think, like the mm. stand has gone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's. That, that packs in tight for a prime. That's, it does. It does. It does. And I like how they're very straightforward about what parts are metal and which parts aren't. Cogman! Oh, or is it Cogman? Oh, it is Cogman, isn't it? Oh, it's Cogman. <laughs> now he's another car former that wears his uh wears his alt mode very very casually. Like he sort of he he looks like he's it's just like, and just stretches for a bit. Yeah, have a car. It is a car. I also like that he comes with a sword. Just yeah, because like why not? Every, every every transformer in that fucking movie had a sword, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, probably yeah. had a hammer, but you know. It is a sleek looking alt mode though. It is. It's actually quite tidy. For a DB9 Vanquish, it looks fantastic. Mm. I, I, I personally love the wheels. I think the spokes look incredible. Uh, right. What are we looking at? Is This, this is uh, scrap metal, is it not? Scrap metal, yeah. Scrap metal is the excavated digger. He looks like... I mean, I can't fault him. Like, as far as Studio Series Devastator goes, he's a beautiful yellow. His alt mode looks amazing. And his bot mode looks pretty killer. He's got arms. He's got legs. He looks like a robot. Look at him. Yeah, not a Devastator constructor con. <laughs> oh, he's part of Devastator. The thing I love is that he's got his little wheelie wheelies on his on his on his little ankles. <laughs> These are my little duty doos. Now we've seen Cogman before. I'm not sure we've seen this guy before. 
Have we? No. This guy's an original mold designed no, for. No, no, no. I mean, like we've we've seen we've seen the Studio Series version oh. before. This guy, I think this is the first time we're seeing it in color, is it or something? I don't remember. Also, oh, we, we uh, a, I also kind of don't care because it's a it's a constructor con, but like whatever. I I kind of wish that the movie bots were more like this guy. Like. Mm. He is interesting because the next up, I'm pretty sure we're going to be looking at Rampage, who is just confusing. Oh, yeah. So, so he, this guy is an arm, but okay. So he's, he's Rampage, who looks like an amazing bulldozer, and then he turns into what? Is, he, is, is it a pendulum? What is his bot mode? Pendulum. Mm. He's a what? A pendulum. He swings back and forth. Hmm. You mean a wacky, wavy yeah, no, 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 no. If, like, he's hopping mad as what? Well. He looks like one of those inflatable things you give kids and you punch them in the face and they come back up. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's basically it. it. It sticks too. And even we talked a couple of weeks ago about Hightower, just how ridiculous the bot modes are, but are keeping in tone with the Constructicons from the movie. Just Well, I mean, they can't, they can't very well do something different, can they? No, well, it's just, no. it's just how... They'll portray the movie as just really weird and completely far off to what the do, Autobots were. Do you feel like? Do you feel like someone has convinced someone has convinced Hasbro that there's a lot of desire for an updated version of Revenge of the Fallen Devastator around for its tenth anniversary? I want to believe that there's like a designer at Hasbro headquarters and like his hair's all frazzled and he's like smoking the 18th cigarette for the day and they're just going, "All right, Greg, what's this?" And he's like, "I never did it right the first time." I got it this time. Just, just give me one more chance. Okay. And as okay. every as every can do figure it. is coming out, everyone's just like, Greg doesn't have it anymore. No. Nope. Well, not only <laughs> that, just they would have had to look at eBay and see the original Supreme Class Devastator going for four hundred plus dollars mm. in sealed box, and going, well, that's for that piece of shit. Let's do it better and proper. Yep. We can get thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. And I mean, a lot of this also is still this weird sort of gray area where some of the bots in the films, you never saw them in a bot mode. You no, barely saw them in an alt mode. Of course not. But, I mean, you, can, really you wouldn't be able to tell if you saw this one in the bot mode because, like, look at us. Well, see, we just talked about the Excavator one. That was never part of Devastator. It was never in Revenge of the Fallen. We sent it for two seconds on a barge and it come back in Age of Extinction. It's just... Mm. That was... Eh. <laughs> That's like there's eight bots included here where we only see five, six combined in Revenge of the Fallen to become Devastator. Mm -hmm. There's just there's there's added junk here just to make yeah, robots just to make it work. Modes. Yeah, make it all work. Just the one thing I do like out. about this guy is that looking between his two alt modes, and I hate this. I hate that it, it gets me. Go on. I don't know how it transforms, but I want to know. <laughs> I see little bits here and there, but there's it doesn't like I I, I can't look at it and go. I know that works. Well, that. you asked. This has already been released, so you can watch YouTube videos now. Yeah, I don't need to buy it. Someone else will. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's some good good transformations there. There's some niche the stuff. Thing, like, it, it's not for me, but I can't fault its accuracy. Like I've seen the movie. I know how this guy worked, and I mean that's that's a toy representation of that guy. And it's pretty pretty good. Pretty good. Well, this comes with a stand. I know we're gonna go yeah. single leg pogo <laughs> stick. We'll make a stand for us. So fine, can leave fine, it. Fine, fine. You can imagine, like, yeah, Billy, I finished transforming it. Thump. <laughs> <laughs> the natural state of the rampage. Ace down the ground. He's a leg, of course. I, I like how after every uh, after every image of a, a Constructicon, we just get, like, this map. It's like, yeah. oh, just in case you couldn't tell, this is the part of Devastator that it is. He's also a foot. He's a triple changer, kids. Uh. Yeah. Technically, uh, technically, the Constructicons are the first triple changes to actually come out in the studio series because all the other ones were cheats. <sighs> this is true. This is true. All right, let's move on. We have um, of the visual medium of the printed variety. Indeed, uh, it is time. It is time to talk about IDW's new Transformers comic, a which old new era. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't I can't help but think. So Ash, you've read the comic. Yes, yes, I have. Comic. We are talking about IDW Transformers number one. Brad, you've also read the comic. Brad has muted his microphone as oh, he often was when he was talking about comics. Brad, you've also read the comic. Yes, I have. There we go. Okay, right. So, like, um, having uh, having read. <laughs> 
This is going to be a terrible joke. I'm sorry. Having read the first issue of the comic, do you think a bold new era refers to the typeface? <laughs> Considering you the title these jokes around me, because I'm a <laughs> man's transformer nainers. Bold. Uh, I was going to say I didn't even know transformers were supposed to have hair. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they miss. They misspelled that. <laughs> 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 So, uh, okay, look, so this is the first, this is the first uh, issue of IDW's brand new Transformers continuity. It is a whole new world, so don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> not at Cybertron. We've been here before. Just ah, not like this. It's Cybertron, Jim, but not as we know it. Correct. There we go, and it means we've got this new visual aesthetic that is slavishly accurate to the toys. Like, right down, you can probably see where pins go through some joints. No, but, um, you know what? I don't, actually, I don't actually mind the fact that the figures look like the toys in this case. Like, uh, the toy designs are pretty... The toy designs are pretty good and modern, and... Um, I, I like the fact that the I like the fact that the toys are actually pretty obviously the source material for the artwork in the uh, the artwork in the book. Um, there's a there's a few differences. Obviously, this is not an Optimus Prime figure that is currently available, but it is mm -hmm. something that we will see down the line. Spoilers. Yes, spoilers. Think about it. <laughs> can you truly enjoy the artwork when you know full well that the artists are probably sitting the toys in poses and being like, oh, oh, Ironhide, it's me talking to you. And they pose them and draw them exactly like that. Is it effectively <laughs> tracing? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, so you know what? I, what I, I actually quite appreciated as I was reading as I was reading the, the comic and you know being aware of certain bits of the figures, I actually quite appreciated the fact that you can probably actually get the, the toys to pull off some of the poses that you see in the comic. So like, thing, I, I thought that was kind of cool. The thing I would question, however, is as soon as we get our first siege figure, I mean, it's, the line's been pretty good so far. Mm -hmm. The first siege figure we get that has inexcusable kibble, something that's just horrible, will we see it in the comic? Will will somebody turn around and have a big old butt flap, you know, oh, or a I, stupid I, backpack? I, I, did see, I did see someone make a joke on Twitter that... Um, Mega, so Megatron actually does have his bot mode kibble such that he actually ran into Ironhide with it in the comic. <laughs> oh, when he bumped him. Oh, yeah, when he bumped into him. That was his kibble bumped into him as oh, he was leaving the room. God. I thought oh. it was pretty neat. Well, there we oh. go. There's your, there's your answer, kids. So it, it is a it is a kibble friendly it is a kibble friendly book at this <laughs> stage. Inclusive book. Let's also just remember, however, that IDW's original Transformers continuity started with a weird hybrid of the movie verse designs and the G one designs, and they very quickly abandoned that after. Like, they also were very strangely detailed in all the wrong places. Correct. Hmm. Now, um, so as far as as far as plot and setting goes, like uh, I feel I use the word remix when we were talking about Bumblebee. It's taken some things that we've seen before, and it's reusing some of them, and it's extending some of them and changing them. And I think I, I think I think that's pretty much what you're going to do when you reboot a franchise, right? Some things are going to be the same. We've already had a name drop of Tarn, one of the, the previous mm. generation's most iconic Decepticons. But also, he was named after the birthplace of the Decepticons, which does appear like it's going to be the case in this continuity as well. Yeah, yeah. We are seeing protests and unrests uh, amongst the, the populace, which is obviously going to be the start of the uh, Decepticon movement, or as they've been called so far, the uh, Ascenticons. Ascenticons. Yeah. Right. Oh, I, so I, I actually think it's interesting. What's the opposite of ascend? It's descend. So like yeah. you sort of see yeah. a Decepticon from a Centicon. It's always you know. a bit of a, bit of a uh, you know, it, it's obviously it's an 80s cartoon property. It's the kind of thing where like the bad guy's name is always something like Snidely or, you know, Dr. Evil. And you're like, he's the bad guy. You know, the bad guys were the Decepticons. And it's like, uh, did they choose to call themselves that? Uh, 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 and a couple of different forms of Transformers media have nodded at it and enjoyed it. Like, you know, Transformers Prime nailed it with, like, you know, oh, Megatron. Yeah. Yes, they say that to put us down. We'll wear it proudly. Funny. And same within Bumblebee when, you know, old mate Cena is just like, they're called Decepticons. Is anybody else worried about that? <laughs> this is, this is a good you. little nod to 
you know, hmm, hmm. It's, not, it's, it's, it's not a complicated um, thing to grow. No, it's, yeah. it's simple, it's funny. But, I mean, of course, we're going to have to have some moment where it's just like, well, then we will be Decepticons and then, like, big open thing, end of comic. Tune in next week, reader. I'll tune in in two weeks because we do we are getting a two-week publishing schedule in this comic. Yes. My only issue with uh, media like this, particularly, like, sort of, it's set before the war and it's, you know, it's at a time in peace. It's a weird place for writers to be because obviously they're moving towards the thing that everybody knows. So how quickly do they do that? And if they drag their feet, how weird does it feel? It's like when they announced the Gotham TV show. I was like, what was Batman? Huh. Like, before he was Batman. I was like, are there people out there who actually give a shit about that? But, I mean, it's good to see our favorite characters doing things that aren't just shooting at each other. But it's a question of as long as they can keep it engaging, it'll be fine. And as long as they don't rush to the wall because then they're just back in the same old place. So, well, so let, let's talk a little bit. Um, there was an interview with uh, incoming writer Brian, uh, uh, Brian Ruckley. And uh, he's... He said uh, there is no crossover with any other Hasbro franchise. Thank. So that, that no expanded universe that they were talking about. People were like, cool, G.I. Joe and My Little Pony will turn up on Cyber Patrol. G.I. Joe and My Little Pony can well fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at it. It's Echo 1. Mm. Uh, there, is, there is to be no war, which is interesting for a franchise that is based on warring robots. And there is also no Earth, at least for now, which um, makes sense if there's been no war because generally the, generally the Transformers come to Earth after the war breaks out. So... Can I just add yeah. the question? Go, go, go. If there's no war, then there should be no alt modes. Uh, I, don't believe that's, alt I don't believe that's correct. No, alt modes were always part of Cybertron in history. The war was caused technically, I mean, in some continuities, the war was caused because of altism or whatever. Like, you are a truck, you will carry things. Okay. I thought, I thought it was the fact that the they're robots and they become alt modes to hide and be robots in disguise in the war. But no, there's always war, there was always alt modes. It's just that when the yeah. war started, the alt modes shifted more towards weapons of war rather okay. than of industry. Yeah, especially on the Decepticon side. Okay, yeah. oh. definitely on definitely um, on the Decepticon side. There, let's talk a little bit about the cast of the comics. Now, I've I've stuck Orion, Pax, and Megatron together in the same sentence because uh, most of the like the the only real mention of them was uh, having them together. Although there was a there was an interestingly detailed reference to Prowl being trapped under a pylon for 10 yeah, cycles. and being a bitch about it. <laughs> um, so, 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 yeah, so we've got... Um, there was a, this big, long discussion between Orion Pax and Megatron, which I thought went all right, but it felt like it was really trying to be sort of a, an, an updated take on one of IDW's prior sort of, you know, big hit moments was... Uh, I think it was issue number nineteen, which was a big discussion between uh, between Prime and Megatron back in the uh, back in the previous continuity, yep. and it felt like this was really sort of intended to be a bit of a set up as a bit of a sparring sparring match on that level. Didn't quite didn't quite hit all the notes, but I did appreciate some of the little sort of chuckle moments where you you sort of did get this impression that these two characters have been around each other for long enough. Uh, Rob, yeah. It was hinted that one is one cycle older than the other. It reminded me a lot of Titans Return. Yeah. Just just that real cocky Megatron, like, what are you talking to me for? Why have you organized for us to have this meeting? Um, yep, that, yeah. no, that seems correct. Uh, we also got a pairing up between um, Bumblebee and newcomer Rubble. Not sure why we need a newcomer, Rubble, but Rubble is a recently forged Transformer who has not been alive for very long and is still amazed by practically everything. It's the kind of uh, youthful optimism that will get really old really fast, but I suspect that we might be in for, we might be in to see a bit of a fall from uh, from Rubble. We'll see. Well, I read that entire first issue thinking that was Rumble. Ah, did um, you not? Did you not notice the two Bs in his name? I did not. Okay. I thought that was Rumble, and mm. he's looking at things in the first and of Rumble, Rumble, Soil, and Trouble <laughs> gets corrupted by Soundwave. Obviously, <laughs> obviously not. Well, I, I actually no. I actually wonder if he might end up being Rumble because like well, his name is very similar. So we'll see. Yeah, it, the, 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 like he's a smaller size of B. He's, he's that cassette size. Yeah. Um, so we also yeah. got uh, we also got fan favorite Windblade. Hi, I'm Windblade. <laughs> yeah. Superhero landing. Yes. Mm. Yep. <laughs> 
Uh, so Windblade is part of Cybertron's security force. Uh, Bumblebee, it is implied, used to be a part of the security force until the incident, which uh, no one wants to go into at this point because it is just issue number one. <sighs> um, all three of them, Bumblebee, <laughs> Rubble and Windblade, are on their way to see some kind of a demonstration from Brainstorm, who uh, we only cite on the very last panel of the comic, and it does appear that he might be dead. Yeah. So Brainstorm may be the first Transformer to die in the uh, the new IDW continuity. Yeah. We have been told that a, a murder will rock pre-war Cybertron, and so maybe it's maybe it's Brainstorm. Uh, there was also an or, was also an organic life form that uh, I think they called them scavengers, or some kind of yeah, something along those lines. Yeah. So um, Rubble fell off a cliff and landed uh, in a pit with a bunch of organic. Monkeys. Organic uh, <laughs> monkeys, yes, that uh, <laughs> appeared to be maybe about to do him some damage when Windblade turned up and very kindly shot them all. Well, one of them had a octopus in a fishbowl attached to its head, so <laughs> I don't know what was going on there, if that was implying some sort of intelligence to the leader, or maybe. we'll see if that comes back later on. <laughs> well, you'd have to assume that they'll be, a, they'll be a part of the story, otherwise, like, why put them there in issue one? We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. So yeah, um, so what, what what's going on in the plot? Megatron is on his way to the city of Tarn, where he's going to give a speech that will probably form the Decepticons, or at least spark some kind of an unrest. Orion Pax would rather he did not, didn't doesn't want him to give the speech today. Megatron scoffs, and uh, apparently Megatron has the gift of the gab. So uh, we will we'll see how he goes with this. Uh, there's some kind of a demonstration of uh, some technology demonstration of energon forging that uh, Brainstorm is apparently going to be doing, and that's where Bumpy, Rubble, and Windblade are off to. So we'll see what happens in just two weeks' time with issue two. Um, artwork. What, what do you think of the artwork, Ash? I mean, we talked about the we've talked about the figure design, but there's also a lot of uh, sort of a lot of sweeping landscapes and uh, sort of panoramas of Cybertron here. Is it does it strike you as something new and bold? Um, I like it that it, it does. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of weird when it comes to me in the comic books that we've had in the past. There's sort of been like times where I really liked it and times where I kind of didn't. This is hitting me right in the middle. I neither like it or dislike it, but I'm curious to see how it develops and sort of goes. I do like that they've managed to nail that they can sort of give characters emotion and such. Some people sort of lean too much on the bot side of things. It becomes a bit sort of, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be feeling looking at this person. I don't know what he's supposed to be feeling as a character, yada, yada. So, so for the most part, I like the colors. I really like the bold shading that they've used. And um, there's going to be a couple of artists involved, isn't there? I think there has to be. Um, like they've got a two-week publishing schedule. Uh, I, I, I feel like it might be week on, week or, or issue on, issue off for, um, for people. We'll see how we go. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. But I mean, that's the thing. It's a new continuity. We've got no idea what happens next. Hmm. And that was one way. question I brought up today about just the fact that Windblake said that her and Bumblebee were longtime friends, and that's where I raised the question. Is this some sort of tie into Cyberverse where Windblade's obviously going after B to get his memories back? But that may be just a coincidence. Um, or I suppose we'll find out later. Consider I haven't watched Cyberverse season one or going now into season two, what that goes into. Whether they're going to pull from that with some story threads or just continue on with what they're doing now. Time will tell. Cool. Mm. All right. So. That is uh, that's issue one of uh, of IDW's. Uh, uh, what, what was the story called? The world in your eyes. Yeah. Mm. So we'll see how it goes. Let's uh, let's see what's up next. Uh, the Crime Wars trilogy is now streaming on roosterteeth.com. It disappeared when Machinima bit the dust a few weeks ago. Sure we, did. we had hoped that it might never come back, but unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does appear that uh, Rooster Teeth bought the rights to it, and this is uh, this is perhaps more of a concern because Rooster Teeth are also responsible for the new Netflix series. Make of that what you will. Next, mm. next story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we have been given a, an advanced look this week at Commander Class Jetfire, his packaging art, and. Uh, Cool. It looks like Jetfire. 
that just looks like a it does it's dog it, it great does, bot. but it was not what I was expecting art wise at all. Like it's a really blocky head and such, and like it it's looks not, actually it actually looks to me like he's one of the he actually looks like he's um, been drawn as one of the Combiner Wars figures. I just yeah. I, I don't think he looks even like a transformer. He looks like something out of Macross or something. I was like well, <laughs> there's that war. <laughs> I know, but it was just for the fact, like, you think that they wouldn't? Mm. I, I think I think Hasbro likes to tweak <laughs> tweak the notes <laughs> of, uh, of anyone who holds Macross uh, properties these days. Mm. I don't know. It's 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 not that Macrossy, but um, it also it also doesn't really look like what we expect Jetfire to look like, and it doesn't. Like, I, I think it's because there's sort of the the darker scheme on the front or the um. You know, around the chest, it looks like there's sort of some black parts, but yeah. Well, that's where that that whole battle assault mm. accessories would bolt on. Mm. Yes, it's more egregious think, in the figure itself, but the um, thing that gets me is that there's no personality in him. Like, not not expecting to like you know have a party whistle and a funny hat or something like with a propeller on top, but just like he just looks like a robot. Yeah, yeah, he does. That's like. Well, look, look, look this, this is, I think, the, the less interesting of the two box art reveals. This week. Let's go to the other one. Yeah. I do like that uh, Omega Supreme's on the Jet 5 box arts. <laughs> yeah, he's in the, in the bottom. It's almost like they're saying, if you can afford this, you can probably afford this. There's something bigger coming this way. <laughs> yeah, so if we scroll down. Um, something so, expensive this way come. Yes, Omega Supreme, the uh, the Titan class figure for this year, mm -hmm. such that he even dwarfs the word siege, unlike yep. everything else. Uh, yeah, look, nice, nice looking figure. I find, I'm finding that there's more... There's more sort of darker lines on the figures' shapes this year than we've seen in years gone mm, by, mm. Uh, and so it, re it really does give them a, a different sort of generational look. Very unique art style from a Transformers perspective because there's like a lot of detail that you wouldn't usually expect, getting a hell of a lot of focus. Yep, That's which I have no problem with. One of the things I love about this box, and a lot of people online are pointing this out, is that um, little purple and blue man down the front shooting his gun. You know, pew pew, go away, large man. <laughs> It almost <laughs> looks like a Transformers version of Skeletor from behind. Yeah. 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 Yes, it does. Yeah, make a Supreme, huh? Yeah. Oh, get you, make a Supreme. Yeah. If he turned around and had like a yellow bludgeon face, I would buy that figure and I <laughs> love it. <coughs> but yes, I also love that directly in front of like the grab hand of uh, Omega Supreme. I get the guy's supposed to be getting grabbed in like a magnetic pulse, but he actually looks like he's sort of in the dance scene from the yeah. 1986 movie. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's actually an extra. Dare to be stupid. Of, uh, yeah, he's in the middle. He's at the end of the Dare to be Stupid part with a, right after they've done he, the universe. He's actually reading. an extra for the end of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> oh. It's dancing Ewok, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, that's, that's the same we have with Trypticon too, where you had this massive battle scene and you had these little no-name, undescribable figures <laughs> yeah. below Fodder. it. Yeah. Fodder is what they're yeah. called. Yeah, one of those, well, we, we hypothesized at the time, one of those looked like a little shockwave and nothing ever come out of it, so. Mm. Yep. Right. No, it's, sadly, I'd like to see all of these figures, but uh, we already know that he comes with one little guy, but it's not, not Skeletor. No. Now this... Now you guys are very excited about this. I'm less excited about it, but hey, it's it's a statue. We haven't had some statue news for a while. Pop Culture Shock has a G1 Soundwave statue that has, I guess, Rumble. He's blue, whatever. It's Rubble. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Rubble. It's, it's it's proto Rubble. Uh, <laughs> and we are looking at it. Is it just this one photo? It's Rubble. Yes. Yeah. See, now, I'm excited about this because it's one of those things that I will never own it. I may never see it in person, but I can look at pretty pictures of it you on the internet. You can appreciate <laughs> that it exists. Exactly. Fair enough. All right. Even um, a photo like this, you could you could normally blow this up to A3 or something bigger and just put it on your wall. Like, like the it, detail. If it wasn't for the shading on his gun where you can actually see a proper shadow, I'd almost <laughs> think it was drawn. Yeah. That's yeah. what got me. When I first saw it, I was like, yeah, that's cool artwork. What's the, what's the actual statue? Oh, uh -huh. but <laughs> That's where they got me. It looks like all of those great paints that people do to turn like the masterpiece figures into kind of cell shaded cartoon versions of themselves. Only it's a statue. Mm, it is. Yeah. Right. 
so that happened. You want to talk about this? I want to talk, <laughs> I, I want to talk about these guys now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did see the reveal of a uh, a collaboration with Takara Tomy and Atmos because apparently, as MP44 is coming up, uh, Takara's realized that they have a shitload of MP10s that they need to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> and so they are farming them out to Atmos to paint to look like their shoes. Now, this is an amazing, amazing collaboration. When you look at when you look at photos like this one, where you've got literally a leopard leopard dots, and you've got stripes, and then you've got those reflected onto Optimus Prime for absolutely no reason. A white Mickey Mouse gloves with his leopard print. Yeah, leopard leopard zebra. <laughs> The, yep. These guys have totally pimped out Optimus Prime. Like, this is Prime as you've never seen him before. It's pretty amazing. Um, can you go to the next, the yep. next picture? Next well? slide. What the hell is that? Yeah, so now he's green and right. black. Now, here's, here's the thing, right? <laughs> these, two, these two are new reveals. We saw three or was it four reveals a couple of weeks ago of these. And... The way that the way that Atmos is actually handing these out, in uh, they're not handing them out. They are making you pay. They're for handing them. it out. We get one for free. They're not handing them out. <laughs> if they're handing them out, I'd be somewhere doing this. So, Please, so, sir. so what you got to do in order to get one of these is that you need to install the Atmos app on your phone and enter the lucky draw via the app, and then. If you are lucky enough to be one of the ones selected, then Atmos will allow you to give them money in exchange for them. <laughs> Congratulations! You win the opportunity to pay us money! Yeah. <laughs> then, these guys don't just take money from anyone. I mean, like, you you got you to gotta line up. and You've got to win. Now, can I, just, to win can I just point out my absolute favorite one of these? Wait, wait, wait. Before we move on from this one, yeah. it's a green Optimus. It's okay. Optimus yeah. Lime. Yeah. Lime, yeah, definitely lime. All right, now you can move on. Okay. Next tab, please, <laughs> No, next tab. Next was, tab. I've only got two. Oh, next. tab. Yep. There you go. This one, this one, yeah. Jason. This guy's amazing. Optum Mustard Prime. No, Mang Mangamus Prime. <laughs> actually, it's, 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 actually just Optim it's actually just Optimus Prime sponsored by Mango Weiss. Now, honestly, for the people listening at home and who can't see this with your, you know, audio vision, he's yellow. No, he's orange. He's mango he's coloured. So yellow. we are we are looking at the LeBron version, which is which is probably the best the best non canon colour scheme I've ever seen on this figure. It smashes shattered glass out of the park. It's way better than all your nemesis modes, or whatever. It looks amazing. It also like it does bear a more of a passing resemblance to Fire Guts Jinrai, uh, which is probably why it looks amazing. But this is like the one deco of this that I want to get. And have you entered the draw? Uh, so the draw took place two weeks ago. Oh, oh did you win? No. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> have you located the person who did win? Uh, also, they, they were they they. they Are you stalking them now? <laughs> they wear their like skin. A few hundred or a, a few thousand of them go. <laughs> They are six hundred dollars. You can. Get them. They are priced like a bape, except oh. like a bape. These are even rarer than a bape because they've been released in such limited numbers. You can't just walk into a store and get one. But the question on everyone's lips: Are we finally reaching a point where the MP10 mold has been reused more than the Henke Seekers? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are 31 known uses of the, the, the classic sticker mold. Uh, How many more primes are there? How uh, many more do we need? I think MP10 is only up to about 15 or 20. Yeah, I know, but it's still yeah. 15 it's or 20. Yeah, it's only up to like five, 10 or so. I don't yeah. know about you guys, but I am most excited about Breast Cancer Optimus Prime coming out next year in Neon Pink. <laughs> Man, that would be amazing. I'd totally what did you say that? But I would want it so yeah. bad. Wasn't Breast that already a thing? I thought, I thought we did have a pink prime. Mm, like no, no. Purple one for shattered glass. Okay. Pink Optimus Prime. I'm googling, Captain. I'm googling. I, I'm just starting to Google. I thought I'm seeing a pink one. I not um, see anything jumping out at me. Okay. Yeah. That's the thing. Like this, this past fortnight or three weeks, we've seen this and two other repaints. No, there's, no, there's oh. like five now. There's yeah. four, four yep. or five or six of them. We yeah. saw this is probably the biggest collection of uh, other colored primes that hit us mm -hmm. all at once. Meanwhile, we've seen MP45 for the last six months. <laughs> <laughs> in prototypes and everything else so it's like we're bringing this out it's coming 
But in the meantime, so here's this, 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 is, this is what I was saying. Like, I reckon that they've just shipped off all of their MP10 leftover stock out to someone else to go and get them to paint them. I think Takara, it's it's not painting. They've just they've just looked at the molds and they've gone, right, well, we don't need these anymore. Let's ride them hard and put them away wet. What colours have we got? I think they've said, let's do a 10,000 production run and see how we can sell them before they've <laughs> put the mold away. Like The final prime yeah. will just be completely transparent. That Eva, the Eva one, was that a sign up to get as well? There was no. one other. No, Eva, Eva was general, mm. general release. General. Yeah, yep. I thought I thought I was one other. Yeah, I mm. thought there was one other one that was a pay to play. Maybe I not. do love uh, Banana uh, so the... Paddle Pop Prime, but the one thing that worries me, and it, it just I can't stop looking at it, is just why does he have a tiny little smidge? of mustardy brown on his crotch. I get that that's where his little blue <laughs> thing goes, but just when it's mustardy brown, it's like a paddle pop stick color. It weaves me out. <laughs> oh, prime go poopy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, you, may, you, you may not like it. I can look past it. If I get a chance to add this to my... I can look past it too. I just need to do this <laughs> and put my thumb on the screen there. And <laughs> all good. Of course, now I'm thumbing prime in the crotch, but you know, it's not the first time. No, every time we transform him, right? Crotch you, know, you, 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 you can't, you can't resist. Oh, uh, we've all thumbed figures where we shouldn't have thumbed them during transform. No, no, no. Actually, you, you've missed the obvious joke. You got the touch. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, let's move Speaking on. Speaking of touchy feely, you know, this is one figure that you might not want to touch. Except we've really, no, we've left it in because Brad does want to touch it. So we are looking at masterpiece movie MPM 8 It is. Is inching ever closer to reality. We've got in hand images of it. Um, and he comes with a little mini Ospark. So cool. Um, Brad, how is your frothing demand for this figure? It recently come out, this is going to be exclusive here for $200. But I think the size, I don't know if we've got a fire here with some. Oh, yeah, we do. The size is absurd. I'm pretty sure that's the masterpiece when it comes up. That is the masterpiece Ironhide figure. Ironhide, yeah. Yeah, wow. but the next one shows the new masterpiece, uh, the new oh. Megatron figure. That yeah. puts it in perspective. Uh, based off the size, he's basically as tall as your masterpiece uh, Ultra Magnus would be. Mm. So if you were to pick this guy out by the legs, could you kill someone with him? Oh, um, certainly. <laughs> you can probably club them with him, and uh, you could probably extend his flail and also whip them while you do so. <laughs> yeah, it just I don't we've we've um okay. I've commented before about how good this looks and just seeing it in scale here next to the masterpiece Megatron. Um unfortunately no photos with it next to oh what's well, on top of Masterpiece Prime. <laughs> um it just looks fantastic in both modes. Again, I love how it isn't withheld to a earth mode, so you can get away with him not having a robot hanging under the jet, although... Apparently, his jet mode is absolutely colossal. That's the one thing I've heard people say again and again, is that he's a big bot, but in jet mode, he's even bigger. Even in that picture just there, you have some nondescript person's hand, and even that, he just that, looks like... Yeah. He's, Look how big it effing is! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That makes that the $200 stupid. price tag feel a little bit more comfortable. Mm. Um, and, I mean, that's for that's for a masterpiece figure. Like two hundred dollars seems pretty good for this. For a masterpiece of that size, two hundred dollars. Like, how much was Ultra Magnus as a masterpiece? Not two hundred bucks. Two fifty. A lot more. Hmm. Yeah, but it, it's just a detail. Like Ultra Magnus was a brick with mm -hmm. some blue and white. But where this thing's just the detail behind the individual panels. Yeah, I said it a couple of months ago, and I stand by it now. This figure looks better than the film version did. I prefer oh, this on, hold on, hold on, to what hold, I saw in the film. Hold on. Why? Yeah, I was going to ask. Chewy gummy bears. No, why is there a picture of Melbourne's CityLink freeway in the background? It's probably um, a Windows guessing... lock screen where they show pretty things. I'm most worried about the little anime girl off on the right hand side who's just, you know, eh, it's Megatron. What the hell? We're, we're gonna we're gonna try and get into this. No, that's not gonna. No, be that's really that's really no, not gonna. No, not gonna it's only gonna that. reveal to you. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing. You know, I'm guessing he works with his CityLink. That's why he's got the screen 
screenshot there. I don't know. I think he's just a big old gaming nerd. He's got a Resident Evil pad underneath his keyboard and mouse. Mm. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that that image you're looking at is just one of those Windows lock screens that goes, here's a cool piece of... Photo. Yeah, it probably yeah. does. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, but now we've we've talked a lot oh, about this. Oh, and I've look, lost little... go oh. back one. Next to the keyboard, gentlemen. Is that a bot? Bot? That's a bot. Bot. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Mm. Is it is it this dude? Is oh, it, don't make me change the, the photo. The burrito? No, no, no. It's not the burrito. Oh, it's the one that turns a little potted plant. Oh, I haven't got him. Mm, the little potted plant. I forget oh, what his name is, like Snapdragon or something like that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely. I'd love to be able to get this. I think it's um in some select yeah select stores. If um, I think it's going to be an online purchase, and if it's an online purchase, maybe I won't be able to get it. But yeah, um, hasn't he, haven't the um Studio Series figures the MPM's been sold in Zing? Zing, yeah, yeah, it's Zing exclusive apparently. Hmm. Which isn't a bad thing. I mean, we have greater access to zings than we do most other things. I don't. <laughs> you don't? I don't even goddamn Tassie, and even I do. No. Yeah, okay. I'm going to start up a cheaper forwarding store then. Oh, yeah. I call but it then... Ashton Things. Pay for postage and give me a $10 finder's fee. It's yours. All right, let's move on. It's time to go. We are talking about... Civil Warrior General Grant. This guy is a War Within Optimus Prime figure. Um, we've got a great prototype to look like. He looks just like the War Within Optimus Prime figure that we've uh, seen done several times by a few different companies. This one has slightly better proportions, I think, than Alpha Stack. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, he could do a wing blade. He's got pointy fingers. That's what I like. You mean you can yeah. move his fingers? No, like in the top right-hand side, it's like, look, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's someone who can fly because I can't. <laughs> I can point this way. He can also yes. pick his nose. <laughs> um, uh, is this so? This guy is transformable. We can see there, and um, is that a hint at maybe a hot rod, Rodimus? No, no. I just assume that he'll have a trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. We'll make that not known at this point <laughs> we'll make it not known cool all right um studio series devastator we've got a new image this is it right this is apparently the render this is what they're showing off obviously there's a lot of figures in here i mean only what he's eight figures total four have been revealed and four have not yeah yeah we talked earlier about i think it was shit stacker or whatever its name was the excavator scrap metal yeah, too. Yeah. Being added, added as an extra limb for his right hand that was never there in the film. It was never part of Devastator. I don't know why they've added this extra bot. It doesn't need to be there. High Tower was his right arm, not Scavenger. Scrap metal. Do you mean his left arm? Well, it's <sighs> out. I'm looking at a photo on a screen. <laughs> Yes, but you, are, but you are aware that like when someone orients their direction to face towards you, their left is your right. The sky's blue. Unless Camera left. <laughs> up, up is down. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, Studio Series Devastator. So Brad, um, you were up on this previously. Are you not now because of the changes? Oh, no, I'm still up, but I won't be getting... Drop metal scavenger for the hand. So your devastator won't do that much damage because he'll be armless. No, he'll have an arm, but high tower with the arm. There's enough. There's enough it's kibble there hanging off high tower to become <laughs> a hand. It'll just be like it'll just be like a little short stumpy. Um, yeah, yeah the scoopy bit. It's Revenge of the Fallen. Megatron had a gumpy arm as well. And a crab claw. Yeah, they had a gumpy, uh, gumpy plot, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, what thing I like about this image better. looking at is that they show his head with a very, very, very obvious looking glow effect. And I'm not sure if that's just something that they're pushing for the artwork. I wonder if that could be a gimmick for the actual Mixmaster figure, which will house the head. It's enclosed in mm -hmm. the barrel, the Mixmaster barrel, just yeah. like the original Supreme class. So, I, I can see it being something very easy to do and cheap. Mm. Without, without the whole push the tab down and the whole end of the barrel expands and the jaws drop down 
like the original Supreme class did, just having the LEDs in there, I think, is enough. The one thing I'm glad not to see, there's no testicles. That's well, actually that's actually the uh, the mystery ninth bot. Yeah, this <laughs> ball bearing. This, the Supreme class didn't have it, so technically, if this wants to be accurate, it needs to have it. When the collected kit comes out, you'll get a set of truck nuts just for this. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get some truck nuts on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're done with that. I think we're done with news. We've um, we've basically, I think we've descended into mockery. <laughs> We're discussing truck nuts. We've done enough. I feel uh, look. I, I feel like the mockery was well deserved, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it is time to talk some new acquisitions. Um, oh, I have a few because it's been a few. It's been a few weeks since I've been on. Um, uh, but uh, Brad, no, um, I'm still at only one figure purchase for this year. Which is <laughs> that was that uh, war Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Oh, Last night. oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's oh, nothing. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, uh, so ex- except for, yeah, except for those single or three step change of Cyberverse or Bumblebee figures, there's, there's nothing. I've not seen anything new. No Siege, no, even no proper Bumblebee Deluxes. Siege, uh, not Siege, Studio Series is still Wave 2. There's Megatron and Brawl. There's Good nothing brawl. past that here anywhere. So I'm not paying retail plus postage oh. for figures. So I'm going to come back and get back in my hole. When I get a new figure, when I see a new figure, when I see a bot bot, <laughs> I'm happy to buy bot bots, but I'm just not seeing them. I'm, I'm in a dark spot, Transformers related at the moment. There's just nothing new at all. Hmm. Until Masterpiece Megatron comes out in a mm. couple of weeks' time, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we shall have something to talk about. Well, we shall. Um, well, I shall. I'm but. looking. Well, I, I'll have uh, I'll have Beast Wars Megatron as well when he uh, when he turns up too. I suspect we might be getting him from the same place too. I yeah, sir, um, challenge you to a duel. <laughs> so now I'm looking at all of the bot bots on the table in front of me for acquisitions, and uh, none of them reflect the shape of a violin. However, there is one. <laughs> there is one that makes a pretty freaking awesome bot bot, and he turns into a guitar. Yep, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> all right, hang, hang, hang on, let me let me like do this. Poop on his head. Hey. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, brown dookie on his head. Is that his? Wig or the end of the guitar? I, I just came out of nowhere. Uh, he's been glowing. Glowing. Yes, <laughs> he's been iced like a cake. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me just flip that there, flap that there, 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 and then there. And look at that guitar. Look at him. Okay, yeah, that's amazing. I know. Yeah. Like, this is actually the best bot bot figure that I've ever seen. <laughs> You need a deluxe uh, sound wave to hold him, and yeah, shredded axe. So, it, it, so in, instead of a deluxe sound wave, instead I've got the laptop dude. He does. Like, he is a Decepticon all the way. He, he, no... looks, he looks great, and he's even got other Bot Bot figures as stickers on his uh, on his laptop case. That's fantastic. So scissors. Um, yeah, yeah. One of the one of the Bot Bots is safety scissors, and I'll also. <laughs> I just want to point out this this other one right before we move on. Like oh, this, kit. this guy, the oh. drum kit's great. He's fantastic. He's he's such a little happy chap too. Look at him, look at him. What oh. what, a, what a what a happy boy. Um, I need join these figures again. The bot bots are going to do it for me. But I just freaking need them. Mm-hmm. I need to, need to see them. Hopefully, I know. Um, there are a couple. Of, I will say like I so I put this one on the group last night, but like. Um, does, that, do, does anyone who's been looking at the Facebook group know this guy's name? That's Steve from Accounting. He's Steve from Accounting. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's literally called Steve from Accounting. And because I know that people are not going to believe me, <laughs> I've got the instruction sheet here, right? And if I if I hold this up in the right way, you will see Steve from Accounting. Well, that I was going to say no one's replenished the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, no, like uh, it's 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 my favorite bot bot name is Steve from Accounting. Like, there's 
There's there's just no beating it. Um, I, I think the entire the entire Hasbro Transformers division should just pack up and go home. There's no beating that name. It's that's kind of. I think they've just basically peaked. Just sold down from YouTube, sorry. <laughs> I think they have. I think they have. Um, a couple of other acquisitions. I'm going to leave you to talk about your acquisitions, Ash. I did manage to procure a Magic Square Blaster. Oh, he's adorable. I know, he's a cute little blaster. Yeah. And also, he's been showing hers up in the group for a while, and I think it's a fantastic looking thing. Well, he's only like a little bit taller than a bot bot. It's two and a half bot bots tall. I know. It's like a see, did he come with a lino and the other tapes? Uh, no, so he comes with one tape. Still draw? Oh. Or, or, or if or if you're mine, he comes with two because one was in his chest and one was in the box. But they are the same. Um, and uh, I think this is this one's more ram horn, I think. Um, so like if I flip that there and flip that the there. Rhino is, is it right? Yeah, yeah. This guy's the rhino. Ram horn. He's like he's he's red, he's not yellow. He rams yeah. and he horns. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well. Um, so let me, okay, so I just figured out there, flip that there, 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 there. And yeah, no, he's definitely the rhino, right? Because when you do that, there you go. You can see his little little rhino horn, right? <laughs> yep. Wow. wow. Look at him. So yes, look at look upon him. Look upon him. Yeah, he's um, upon him. He looks like something that you'd accidentally inhale. I've got, <laughs> I've got I've got a bunch of little transformers, really, is what's been going on, right? So uh, this guy is a bit disappointing. This is Siege. I'm going to move over there. That so is unintentionally thick ravage. Siege he's ravage. Boy. Never missed on calf though. Like you want him to be. Yeah, no, he's just calves except, four except, days. Like he did though, because like look at his actual legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fire! Yeah. It's it. And, and 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 like this, so. Looking at the disappointment that is Ravage, you can clearly see the attention that they lavished on Razor yeah. uh, and Razor and Laserbeak. A lot, a Laserbeak lot of people are Ravage into the chest, Laserbeak onto the arm. Happy sailors, good displays. Mm. Exactly, exactly right. right. Um, and the other, uh, so the other thing before we, uh, before I, uh, before I get off the stage for my new acquisitions is I got a bot bot that turns into a Marak. <laughs> 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 look, at, look at him. <laughs> He's great. He's great. I love wow. him. They're great. They're so much fun. Brilliant. So, Ash, you've also got something else that I have also acquired, so let's talk <gasps> about them. Micromasters! Tiny little things that basically want to fall apart. But um, that's pretty much exactly as they were back in the day anyway, so I'm not even angry. So, obviously, Micromasters have finally reached Tasmania. It was the one siege thing that didn't hit us straight away. And um, yeah, I've got myself Red Heat and Steak out, and they are every bit as I remember them, just slightly better as well, because they've got, you know, ball joints and such now. And yeah, beautiful thing is that, though that their legs love to pop off at the slightest breeze, uh, he's still, still, they've just fallen off here as well. Yep. Yeah, they, they, like I said, you could look at them funny and their legs just spring off. It's what happens. But I, I think this is actually going to be the first time I actually get out the nail polish to try and, uh, to try and beef up the ball joints. I... I have modified so many figures to try and fix them. I look at these ball joints, I'm like... Mm, these ones are not so bad, right? <laughs> uh, these ones just, they want to pop off, and I think I should just let them. As long as I'm not yeah. putting them anywhere that my daughter could possibly eat the missing one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Steak Out and Red Heat are incredible. Uh, I think the other ones that are coming that actually form a giant bazooka, the Decepticons, I want to say it's Top Shot and Flak, but either way, they're, they're military vehicles, and they turn into a goddamn bazooka so uh, as much as these guys are cool and they do sort of form into a weird gun intended for ironhide i want the bazooka like, why wouldn't you I mean, it's, like, it's a bazooka but yeah i dig them and i really like having this price point for like sort of i can you know spare 20 bucks and get two little figures that just i'm not i'm not gonna say hours of joy because that feels really disingenuous but i'll definitely say minutes of joy L lots of minutes of joy that seems Maybe fair. Of joy. Uh, look, I, I do think it's interesting thinking about the price point and the uh, the relative value. Um, we did have someone come on the group on Facebook the other day saying, you know, oh, look, these guys are pretty disappointing. I paid 20 bucks for them. But I think what's, happen what's happening, though, is that he's expecting them to be two figures that are worth 20 bucks each, but they're actually just two figures that are really just worth 10 bucks each. And um, that's quite expensive for a MicroMaster, but, uh, you know, I like it. You know, there's two of them. There. You can sort of see that. I think the thing that sells it for me is that not only are they two little figures that are decently detailed in Transform, the combine into a gun gimmick. Mm, yeah. 
gives gives another little edge. Like I said, the next like these guys sort of can turn into a really odd looking gun that just looks like you know a car rammed up the ass of the other car, and now they're a gun. <laughs> oh, well, that's wait, isn't that how where they memo, that's, memo that's memo where stuff. transformers come from, kids? Is but, it, um, isn't that actually how they combined in uh, Energon? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, Top Shot and Flak actually make a really good looking bazooka, so. Cool. And there's also planes coming. And the two planes, one plane mm. ramps up the bottom of the other plane and they become a sword. Yeah. Mm. So why not? I'm, I'm down for that. And plus they're Decepticon planes. So they're black and purple. Mm, love it. Yeah. Little mini Thundercrack. No, no, no. Skywarps. <laughs> no, 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 black and purple I've been joking with a friend all week about like the only reason people don't like Thundercracker is because he's not Skywarp and I said if we just swap their names like people do with Rumble and Frenzy Thundercracker would get love you mean the black and purple one I love that dude yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, and that's uh, one, of the, one of the interesting things too like going all the way back to Combiner Wars that $19 price point for Legends figures mm. is some of the best figures people have talked about and we've collected or in that, yep. that Legends line, Shockwave, the Insecticons, uh, everything else. I no, love Shockwave. No, like all, Legends all those... Shockwave, no. Um, sea Spray is incredible. Yeah, yep. Coma is such an amazing figure. So he that, could have been uh, in the but he's not, and I don't care. I love him. The thing yeah. is that it's essentially half of those figures. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, like, you, you cut back to the next price point, which is the $9 Titan Master, which is... They are, cube. they are better than Titan Master. Yeah, you got you got you got two. Why am I getting a warning about battery low? It doesn't I don't matter. Know. Oh. It doesn't oh. matter because we're actually nearly finished. Oh. Yeah, I need to plug something in. <laughs> um, but it's just great that yeah, you've got a, a high pro, like the same price point as two Titans with Titan figures with their bot mode or whatever else, but you got that little little bot and everything else. Mm-hmm. I need to plug my phone and plug the iPad in. <laughs> Continue. I'm not sure what we're continuing with. I think, we're, I think we're actually finished. What do you think, Ash? I think we're pretty much done. Pretty much done. We're pretty much done. Are we, are we whispering? Because we're like, he's, oh, he's wait, he's back, he's back. Away from the microphone briefly. We can say all those naughty things about him. Oh, he's back. Never mind. He's back. Never mind. Right. Yeah. Don't worry. Not not nothing. Not the, screen has, the screen has illuminated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all right, good. Uh, you have power for the next 30 seconds of show, which is when I just we say if it cut out, then we could have lost it all. That's just <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Well, we say thank you for listening, everyone. If you're watching along with the live record, thank you for checking us out. I like to enunciate certain words and confuse people out. out. Oh, oh. Nine percent battery power. <laughs> that's uh, that's an excellent, excellent live update. Thank you. <laughs> to find out more about these stories, you'll find links to them and more in the show notes posted to the Transformers Weekly Facebook page and the Podbean site, which is transformersweekly.podbean.com. You will, of course, find us all in Transformers Collectors Club Australia on Facebook. If you're not already subscribed, find the podcast on iTunes, Pocket Casts, YouTube, and more. The RSS feed is on the website and in the show notes. We are a production of Transformers Collectors Club Australia, a registered club in Victoria run by volunteers who donate their time and money to make the club better for everyone. Our goal is to connect Transformers fans around the country. We do it by engaging the collecting community. There are nearly 3,000. No, there's over 3,000 people in our discussion group. There's nearly 2,000 people in our sales group. And most of them, most of them are from Australia. You can find out more information, including affordable yearly membership options to show your support for what we do and us giving up our Friday nights to talk stuff at transformerscca.com. And that is what happens when we give up our Friday nights to talk about this stuff as uh, as we end up yawning through the, uh, yeah. Through the URL. Yeah. Mm. That's it. That's it from us. And uh, we will be back with more Transformers news next week. Same bot time, same bot channel. Same bot bot time, same bot bot channel channel. Same, same. I need no, to find no. some bot bots. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thanks, guys. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>